What up, brothers and sisters, and welcome to MTG Malone with me, Max Malone. Thank you also very much for tuning in. Thank you also very much for the crazy support you got me yesterday. We grew over 30 people once more in one day, which is insanity. So we're going strong on our road to 1.4K. Thank you also very much. I appreciate it so much. If you didn't do it already, subscribe to the channel. Help me reach the next crazy big milestone. I would appreciate it so much. Also, tonight, Wednesday, 8 p.m. CET, 2 p.m. EST, there will be a live stream here on YouTube or on Twitch. You will find all the information down below. Choose your poison. You can find me wherever you want to find me. But enough yammering. Let's get into the last gruel hammering. I decided that I will build the last version of every deck that I loved until we go to Strixhaven because we have 8 days left. I will still be doing some other stuff than only deck tags. You will see, as I said yesterday, I will be presenting 5 decks that I will be building in Strixhaven. So, one day where I will be doing that because sadly I couldn't get into the early access yet. But I will, sooner or later, maybe next time. But enough yammering, as I said, let's get into the last hooray hammering. I wanted to make this deck perfect, and I think I freaking did. The only thing that can really stop this deck is someone that has nothing but removal all the time. But uh, who, uh, who has that? Who has that? Yorian decks? Well, we'll find out. So, this is like the typical group package with two new things in here that make it just a little bit better. The first thing is the Battle Mammoth. You can play this for 4 if you foretell it. And whenever a permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. So the Battle Mammoth is out, they want to kill one of your creatures, want to tap it down, whatever, you draw a card. And drawing cards is always pretty good. Always pretty good. And even if you play this for 5, you're still fine, it is still so sweet, and look at that mammoth, isn't it brutal? The battle mammoth. And then another addition to the team, which is so good, is the Arnie Broken Bro. So, just think, you have your mammoth out, alright? Just think you have your mammoth out. You play your Fabled Passage, then you play your Arnie Broken Bro. You crack your Fabled Passage, your mammoth becomes a 7-7, seven -seven. you play your Arnie Broken Bro, boast him, he becomes an 8-3. 8-3! That is just so crazy! And yeah, if you have your Arnie Broken Brow out, you uh, Kazanu Mammoth, and have enough mana to put an Amber Cleave on the Arnie Broken Brow, he will become a 9-3 and smash in for 18 freaking damage with first strike, double strike, trample, everything. Flying, hexproof, vigilance, he has it all. I'm just kidding, he doesn't, but still. It is just so freaking good. So freaking good. And the rest of the deck is my Easy Snacks deck. You can find that also on YouTube if you want to check that out, if you like that version better. It has some more Mammoth. It has no Battle Mammoth. So uh, yeah, does it really have some more Mammoths? I think it has the same number of Mammoths, but different Mammoths. So we have the Edgar Innkeeper because he's just so good to draw you cards with your uh, Bone Crusher Giant and with your Love Struck Beast. It is just very freaking good. Then we have the Brushfire Elemental, which is just so sweet against those mono red decks because they fill the board with small fries and then you just attack in. They can't block it. What else do you want? You can make him bigger. If you play turn 2 Fable uh, Brushfire Elemental, turn 3 Fable Passage, he will become a 5-5. Five -five. And if you have your Ani Broken Brow out, you can make him a 6-3. It is just so freaking sweet. Also, if they kill your token from the Love Struck Beast and you have your Brushfire Elemental out or your Edgar, you still have a 1-1 to attack in. What else do you want? Nothing, I tell you. Win the game. Just win the game. Then, as I said, the Love Struck Beast, just a very good creature, especially against Mono Red, Mono White. There's almost nothing they can do against this Love Struck Beast because it's just so big. <coughs> Maybe they have like, I don't know, a Soul Seer, but who apart from me plays a Soul Seer in the main board? And best of all, nobody does, so don't you worry about that. Then we have the Bone Crusher Giant. It is just the Bone Crusher Giant. You deal two damage, you become a Bone Crusher Giant. What else do you need? Then we have two Questing Beasts. Why only two? 
because it is not our main win condition. I think it is real good, but I think two is enough. And if you equip your uh, Amber Cleave on the Questing Beast, you can do a lot of freaking damage because of the Death Touch. So, no matter what they throw in the way of the Questing Beast, it only takes one damage to, de de to kill them and the rest will go into your opponent's face. So let's say you put the Amber Cleave on it, it becomes a 5-5. Five five. They block with two 10 tents. Why ever? Just imagine. You still only deal one damage to those and the rest goes directly to your opponent's face. So, always remember that. Also, creatures with power to LS can block it, same as with the Brushfire Elemental. So against those uh, aggressive mono red decks, it is very good. If they have a Torbrand, he can't touch the Questing Beast. Can't touch it. No freaking way. Then, as I said, we have the Battle Mammoth. I wanted to try this. And I hope that it will be doing as much battle as it did in playtesting, because it is just so good. It has trample, if you put the Amber Cleave on it, it becomes a 7-5. It is just so much fun. And of course, my favorite card out of Kaldheim. Oh boy, are you ready? One, two, three, four. Gold Span Dragon. Come to take me away. That was out of tune, but still. Fine, if you know how to do it better, send me your song. Then we have two freaking Amber Cleaves. Because we need them with the Arnie Broken Brow, as I said, it is just so good. We have the Great Hench, and now get this. Let's say you play your Arnie Broken Brow with your Kazanu Mammoth out, you've cracked the Fable Passage and everything, he becomes a 7 7 or whatever. You just pay two for the Great Hench in that same turn, which can be so freaking good so great hand can be very cheap if you have your kazandu mammoth out if you have your ani broken brow out if you have a love strike beast turn four great hand is just freaking normal and yeah the gold span dragon as i said the gold span dragon will attack in there for a lot through the air make yours make you some mana and the best part about it is if you are curving out real good, let's say you brush fire elemental into Gazanu Mammoth, into uh, maybe an Arnie Broken Brow even, or a Questing Beast, you have three creatures on the board, you play your fourth creature with the Gold Span Dragon, you attack in, he will make your treasures two mana treasures, and then you can still play the Amber Cleave. In freaking sanity. You will be there for so much damage, it's not even freaking funny anymore. Then we have, of course, some removal with the Shatter Skull Smashing. It works against creatures, works against Planeswalkers. It is just so good because we need to get through there even if we don't have Trample. Then we have one of the best cards in here. The Inscription of Freaking Abundance. This is a freaking game changer, especially if you have a Goldspan Dragon out. You play this for one single mana in the end. Because you pay five to do all of his stuff, but the Goldspan Dragon attacked in, which made you a free mana. Then you target the Goldspan Dragon with it, which makes you not a free uh, treasure token. So you have four mana. In the end, you only paid one mana for the Inscription of Abundance. It is so much freaking value. And then we have two Fire Prophecies. Oh, also, if they want to destroy one of your creatures with the Heartless Act, you just put two 1-1 one -one counters on it. They can't destroy it anymore. It is so freaking sweet. Then we have the Fire Prophecy, because yeah, sometimes you draw too many lands or you maybe have another Arnie Broken Brow in hand that you really don't need, or a second Amber Cleave or a second Great Hench, you can exchange those for a new card. And that is a thing that I like to do and is just so good. Also takes care of Addixes, it is very freaking sweet. Landwise, we have four beautiful Bob Ross Mountains, we have four beautiful Bob Ross Forests, we have four Timber Crown Pathways, Crack Crown Pathways, and of course the Fable Passage because it activates our Mammoth, it activates our Brushfire Elemental, and yeah, this is a very strong deck. If you want to rank up a little bit and you tie it off the Crocs deck I played yesterday, here is something new to play with. It has some cards that you usually don't see with the Battle Mammoth and the Arnie Broken Brown is head, but trust me, from playtesting experience, I can tell you, those are very strong in here. Alright, enough said, I'm Max Malone, and I will see you in those stompy games. Alright, while playtesting this deck, I had the worst freaking luck of all freaking times, drawing nothing but lands for three straight games. 
But I still won three games where I drew a lot of card, uh, land. So uh, I think the deck is ready. Are we up against the rogue deck? I've seen it. We are. We are up against the rogue deck. But we are going first, which I like very much. Which I like very much. So we're putting down the Brushfire Elemental next turn. So even if he has a... Uh, even if he has a Ruin Crab on turn one, we can still get in with the brush fire. And we can get in for some tasty freaking damage. Alright, not doing anything here. I like it, I like it. Also, we have the Fire Prophecy now. Which is very sweet. So that means that we can crack the Fable Passage next turn, destroy whatever he throws in our way with the Fire Prophecy. Here comes the Ruin Crab. And I think I really want to get rid of that Ruin Crab. Oh, those were some sweet lands off top that I would have liked to have. But this is good. Now we got an Arnie Broken Brow. And I think we're getting ourselves a red here because the... Uh, because of the uh, Battle Mam... Uh, because of the Gold Span Dragon. But maybe we're also preparing... No, I think we're drawing here. Getting rid of the Ruin Crab as long as he doesn't have a counter spell. Now we have the Kazanu Mammoth that we can use as a land, which is very nice. <coughs> Excuse me, boy. And we found a great hench. We have three cards in Graveyard. So we're putting down the Kazanu Mammoth. Does he have an answer here? Does not look like it. So now we're foretelling the Battle Mammoth. Getting in for three here. And uh, yeah, if he has a kill spell, use it. He does. Alright, but next turn we have the Battle Mammoth for four freaking mana, which is just so sweet. Trying to get it out here. Come on, don't have a counter spell. Don't you dare have an... Oh, he had a disdainful stroke. Okay. And here's the Soaring Thought Thief. But next turn, if we are lucky, we can even play our Goldspan Dragon. Let's do, okay, those weren't lands. Those weren't lands. But we weren't lucky. Okay. So even if he counters here, we still have our Arnie Broken Bro. And now we have the Lovestruck Beast, so that means that next turn we can put down the Greatest Hench. Alright, perfect draw here, my friend. There was a very nice draw. A Ruin Crab. Alright, but we're still on 42. We are still on 42. We are now on 36. Annoying, but not the end of the world. Alright, he's milling us a lot of lands. I don't like that. I really don't like that. Milling us so many lands. And now he will 100% have a counter spell. But we kind of need to play our stuff. Kind of need to play it. Oh my lord. Okay, so he has it all. He really has it all. And now here comes a counter spell. I can feel it, but we still kind of need to put down something. All right, doesn't have a counter spell. Like to see that. Really like to see that. That means that we can put down the Great Hange next turn. And we also have the Bone Crusher Giant if he has some more shenaniganery. But I think it is 100% a great hench. We are still not dead. And I think he didn't mill us one single Amber Cleave until now. No, he did not. Did not mill it. Oh, Gold Span Dragon. Okay, still no Amber Cleave. Those are creatures that I don't really care too much about. Not yet. Not yet. The Merfolk Wind Robber. All right, at least we can uh, throw our Bone Crusher Giant onto that Merfolk Wind Robber. So yes, he will draw a card here, and we will lose our Bone Crusher Giant, but at least we can get in for some damage, which is pretty good. Okay, and we can play our Great Hand here, which I will absolutely do, unless of course he has another counter spell here, which he has. Yes, of course, he has it, he has it. But we're still looking A-OK. -okay. We are still looking A-OK. -okay. I mean, next turn we can put down the Questing Beast and our Arnie, I think. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. I can't uh, boast this, but it is still A-OK. -okay. 
So we're on 21 cards. All we need is something to work with. All we need is just a little bit to work with. And even if he destroys my gold span dragon here, I'm still okay. Because I still have the questing beast, which he can't block. I still have the Arnie Broken Brow, which he can block. So we're on 19 cards. Still no Amber Cleave milled. And the Amber Cleave could be a real game changer. Oh, this is freaking perfection. This is freaking perfection. So we're putting down the questing beast first. Just in case he wants to counter it. Just in the case he wants to counter it. The end of the story. Like to see that. Like to see that. Come on, counter the questing beast. Do it. Do it. No matter what you do here. We freaking won with the gold span dragon. Alright, first we're attacking in. Now we make ourselves the mana. Now we do all of them. We get some life. We fight a sorry thought thief. Just in case. Just in freaking case. And we won against rogues in the first freaking game. Take that rogues. Gold span dragon inscription of abundance. Yes, that was like perfection. Mm -mm. Back into Platinum 2 where we belong. And sooner or later, we'll be freaking mythic. I can feel it. Alright, we're up against Smurt. 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 We're going first. I love it. I love it. We have two Bone Crusher Giants. So we will play this as a green and our lock beast out. I mean, that's just, that's no brainer. A freaking no brainer. Next turn we can have our sh I mean, we can use our uh microphone. Oh, he had a Bone Crusher Giant here ready to rock and roll. Okay, okay, my friend. Well, we have a Love Struck Beast now. So, my microphone was acting up again. If I, was, uh, if I wasn't here, I'm still here. Looks good. Looks like my microphone is working. Like to see that. Are you serious? You also have two Bone Crusher Giants. That is so not fair. That is so not fair. But we're putting down the Bone Crusher Giant, and with the Inscription of Abundance, we can even fight one of those. And if we draw one more land, we're super good. We are super good. The Annex. Hmm. First of all, we put down the Brush Fire. And then we attack in with freaking everything because now we have another 1-1 one -one to use. Yes, yes. And he kind of needs to block here. But he doesn't. Alright, well in that case, before he gets more out of his counters, we will fight the Annex. And next turn, no matter what he does here, we have him. He would need to kill the Brushfire Elemental. But if he can't kill the brush fire here, we freaking have him. So, what is your next move? A robber of the rich. Just a little too late, my friend. Just a little too late classic beatdown. So, we're not putting down the land. You might say, what? Not putting down the land? But yeah, the brush fire elemental would get big and strong. We can't have that. Because we need our love struck beast to attack in. That still spells doom for you, my friend. That still spells doom for you. That spells double doom for you. Alrighty. Bone Crusher Giant. Bone Crush away to victory. Mmm. Yes. Take that, Mono Red. Take freaking that. Mmm. 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 So, I checked and of course my microphone was acting up a little bit, so sorry for that. 
I, uh, I ordered the cable to be here very soon. Alright, we're going first. And I think with the Fire Prophecy, we can find the land if we need to. So yeah, let's keep this hand for now. The Shatter Skull Smashing is a land, never forget that. Never forget that it is a land. We're up against Afrob. From a German-speaking friend, you should know the guy. So, putting down a token here. Yes, 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 yes. All right, my friend Afrop, what you playing? What are you bringing? I'm not a mono red deck. Are you serious? Are you freaking serious? No, we're not blocking here. What are we, bozos? Oh, we found the land. I love to see that. Freaking love to see that. So, we can look at what he does here. We can keep our fire prophecy for his annex. But we can just bone crusher his robber of the rich. Yes, yes. And we will 100% do that. Don't want him to steal any of my cards. Those are my cards. No looking at my cards, my friend. The Kazandu freaking mammoth. Yeah, I think we're playing the down now. Attack him, because why not? And uh, maybe we're even exchanging our Arnie Broken Bro for him. But he's just so good. He is just so good. So here's the Addix I was waiting for. The Fire Prophecy, do your job. We want to keep all of our cards. So he gets a small little thingy here, but that is fine. That is absolutely fine. So we're putting down our Love Struck Beast here. Which is a very huge blocker that he can't really do anything against. Getting ourselves, I think, another red. I think it is another red. And as he can't block here, we will attack in. And uh, he would need something really, really good here to get uh, over my Love Struck Beast. And with the Arnie Broken Brow, we can get in there for some tasty freaking damage. Depending on what he does. If he has the Dwarf here, I think I will just... Okay, do nothing. Do nothing. The Fireblade Charger. And another Fireblade Charger. Yeah, you shouldn't attack in, my friend. You really shouldn't attack in. So we are putting down the Questing Beast because he can't block it. And we still have the big boy blockers on the field. So, two Mono Reds in a row. Can we beat them both? We will see. We will freaking see. But he would need something really freaking good here. So, the Bone Crusher Giant is indeed real good. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. But I think we're still kind of in the driver's seat here. I think we are still in the driver's seat here. I will do it like this, so I still have enough of everything. And does he want to block my questing beast? I think he does. So we better not use it here. But with the Bone Crusher Giant and everything, we're looking good. The Torbran. Why the heck not? Why the heck not? Alright, so he's attacking in with everything. But we can block most of his stuff without any worries. So we're doing it like this, like this. Block the Bone Crusher Giant here. He loses most of his creatures. And next turn we can just uh, get rid of the Torbran. Yes, he got in for some damage. But that's, mm, that's really no problem. So. We're attacking in with the Questing Beast. Do some juicy damage. And then we chill. If he attacks in once more, I'm totally fine with that. But he would need like an Amber Cleave here to really, really do me some damage that I don't want to see. But I think he's just going to attack in with his Fireblade Chargers. Yes, yes. How much land does he have? That is insanity. Freaking insanity. So, are you attacking in with everything? No matter what you do here, you're kind of dead, my friend. You are kind of dead. But I still think that he's going to attack in with everything. I still think he does. 
Has two attacks. Fireblade Charger. All right. So, let me see here. Can he activate it? He can. And if we attack him, yeah, we got him. We freaking got him. So he does uh, four damage here. But before damage, we will just uh, kill his Torbran. And then he's dead to our Arnie Broken Bro. Yes, yes, my friend. Yes, yes. Oh, sweet. Double Bone Crusher Giant on the Torbran feels so good. Get stomped, you little dwarf. Get stomped. Oh, man. Not even your axe can save you. Oh, he knows. He knows. I think he knows. Oh, he let it happen. He didn't know. He didn't know. So even if he gets rid of my love struck beast here. Oh, my lord. He knew. He freaking knew. The Arnie Broken Bro was coming. Mm -mm. Rogues couldn't stop us. Mono Red two times could not freaking stop us. Nothing can stop us. We're the stomper machine of the century. Call me the doctor. I shall not call you the doctor. All right, I kind of like this hand. We're up against a Giganta. That could be anything. Could be freaking anything. But could especially be a second snack deck. So if we see black here, we're 100% positive that this is a second snack deck. This is a second snack deck. Well, Red still speaks about a second sn snack and sack deck, so I think it is. But we have a nice curve here, so... If he wants to do anything with my uh, human, that is kind of fine. If he wants to get rid of one of our cards, I think it is the Inscription of Abundance. I think it is. Oh, he's not a second snack deck. Interesting. Pretty interesting. But if he attacks in here, oh, I know what he is. He's the, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, this could be problematic. Yeah, exactly. This is exactly what I thought. This is exactly what I thought. But if he attacks in here, we can uh, kind of block this. Okay. Yeah, I think this is still the better choice. Not losing our human here. He can't uh, really attack in. We can't attack in anymore with the Love Struck Beast, but that is still fine. Because sooner or later we have our Arnie broken, bro. And, uh, yeah. Now we have the Great Hench even ready to rock and roll. So we are also not attacking in. We are not attacking in. So I will be a little careful here. Just a little bit. He has a very cool deck that uh, I wish I could steal, but it has been shown too many times already. It has been shown too many times already. He has his own love struck beast. Hate to see that. Freaking hate to see that. I'm taking him with a little spirit. Okay. So we're putting down the Fabled Passage. Getting our great hands ready. Getting ready for the ultimate attack sooner or later. Also we get some life back here, which is very important. And I think we can play the Broken Bro and the Kazanu Mammoth. And sooner or later, just attack in. So he draws a lot of cards. He draws a lot of cards. That is not good. That is absolutely not good. Call me the doctor. I think, uh, I think you will beat us down here real good. Really good. Yeah, he's drawing two cards, making a spirit here. That is just freaking value. That, my friends, is just freaking value. And he's only attacking in with the spirits. Oh, and the love struck beast. Am I getting rid of the love struck beast here? I think I am. I mean, I can't attack in with it anyways. Can't really attack in it with it anyways. Get myself some tasty life. Oh, the Fire Prophecy is also very freaking sweet. But first of all, we're playing our Arnie. Let us see what we get here. A land. 
Hmm. Yeah, we're playing that for red. As we have some green here with the... Uh... And then we're putting down the Kazanu Mammoth. We found another land. We found another land. And now we're getting in with the human. I mean, we need to do some damage sooner or later. And now we're very well equipped, I think. Very well equipped. Oh my lord, how many cards will he draw here? Three freaking cards. Ready to rock. The showdown of skulls. I like it. I like it. So what does he have here? The giant killer which he can't use. He can't use it. Can we get him here? Can we freaking get him here? I think we can. If we get rid of the Bone Crusher Giant here, let us see what we can draw. Getting rid of the Amber Cleave, I mean, we can play it anyways. So, we need three for the Amber Cleave, so that means that we can play our Love Struck Beast. But let me see. If he blocks everything here, we can make this an 8-8. And he could get in for some damage, but I still think that he wants to uh, wants to save some of his creatures. Blocking the Mammoth here. Alright. Did we get him? Did we freaking get him? So I can make this a 7-7. Seven, seven. And then it will be an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah! We got him! We freaking got him! Oh my lord! And how we got him! So freaking tasty! Oh boy! No one expects it! No one freaking expects it! Oh, get some life even! Oh my lord, we freaking got him with the army broken brow. Mmm, mmm, yes, man, four and oh, four and freaking oh, yes, get up there. All right, I thought in the last game we had a very bad matchup, but we won, and we're up against a Yorion here. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So this is a little slow, and the opponent goes first, so sadly I need to mulligan. Oh, this is not real better. This is not really better. But I think the Shatter Skull needs to go here. Yeah, sad but true. Sad but true. Alright, I like to see that. Like to see that. Crack in the pa Fable Passage immediately. Not going to chill. That is fine with me. I'm way over here. What? What's up with that? All right, my green screen looks over the edge. You stay where you are. I, I pump myself a little bit down. The Wolf Willow Haven. So we need to be very freaking fast here. We need to be very freaking fast here. But I think that we can. I think we can be very freaking fast. So, how fast can we be? I think uh, if we're putting down... We're putting down a red source here. Or a green. I mean, we have a red source in hand. So let's use that. Oh, this is freaking sweet. So in that case, I would put down the mammoth. Because we have the fabled passage. Oh, he has a counter spell, doesn't he? Oh, man. Well... It is still alright. It is still alright. We still have the Love Struck Beast ready to rock and roll next turn. So yeah. But we will see what he does here. The Yorian deck is very well against our deck because we have a lot of 3 drops and stuff. But we will still try to put down the Love Struck Beast. If he has another Javari Disruption, we have one mana to use. Oh my lord! How many counter spells does he have? And the answer is yes. The answer is just yes. Okay. So he's buying himself a lot of time here. But is it enough? Is it enough to get rid of us? So he's still missing one blue source. 
We're not cracking the Fable Pass cheer yet. Getting down our Love Struck Beast. He does not have another counter spell. And if he has the uh, the one that target uh, that can destroy a creature without counters, we're safe. We're safe. And also we have the Inscription of Abundance to fight his Yorian if we need to. So we will see what he does. He has an Eliminate. Oh man, the Eliminate is real bad here. The Eliminate is real freaking bad here. Yeah, he's disrupting our game plan very good here. Very freaking good. But he's still missing one blue... Are you serious? Are you freaking serious? He has everything he could wish of. Every freaking thing he could wish of. Another Yarian deck not seeming to amaze, uh, amaze me. But at least we're drawing some cards here. We drew a land. Not even that bad. Not even that bad. Yes, he will tap down everything we own. He will do it. But hey, what can we do about it? Nothing much. Now with the Yorian, he will make another Kyora best to see God. So yeah, he had like a perfect answer to everything here. Like the perfect freaking answer to everything. So the only thing that could kind of save us here... No, nah, it's nothing. Nothing can save us here. We're totally dead. Died to the Yorian. Perfect everything. Perfect freaking everything. Oh my. I mean, look at it. Get the Javari Disruption, Mystical Dispute, the Eliminate. There was really nothing we could have done here. The Arnie freaking broken, bro. Can we do anything with that? I don't think so. I don't think so. But I'm still going to draw myself a card here. And we got an Edgar Innkeeper. Yeah, good game. The Kiara was real good here. Was real freaking good here. Well, we tried. We tried. We almost went 5-0 again. But you can't always get what you want. <laughs> oh, Gruul stomped so hard. As I said, the only thing that really could stop us was that one Yorian deck. I knew we would encounter one. I just knew it. The one Yorian deck that had nothing but counter spells and removal didn't even have the Heartless Act. Didn't even have it. It had the, the other one that destroys target creature with power 3 or uh, less. So, not even the Inscription of Abundance could have saved us there. And in the end, he had a very freaking nice curve getting into the... Oh man, the Kiara Best to see got still one of the best cards out there. If you made it this far, you obviously enjoy what you've seen. Thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, join the Discord. You will find everything down below my beautiful Batman shirt. So, this was the last hooray. I'm Max Malone, and I will see you all tomorrow.